YouTube family. Welcome back or welcome to my channel. Thank you guys so much for coming to check out this video today. I am in the kitchen and I am going to be whipping up a hash brown breakfast casserole. Now, if you have never heard of this, then I'm going to show you everything that you will need to make this hash brown breakfast meal possible. Very simple ingredients. You're going to have your main ingredient, which is your hash brown. Your second main ingredient is your eggs. Everything else you throw in there after that is completely up to you. So guys, stay tuned for this video. Make sure you watch this video to the end because if you are looking for something different to cook in the morning, then this is definitely something that you will not want to miss. So let's get into this video. Let me show you guys everything that I will be using today. All right, guys, let's go. Okay, so let me show you everything that you will need to make your hash brown casserole possible. Now the main ingredient right here is your hash browns. Now I'm gonna be using this right here. This is a, uh, I'm not sure the exact measurements on it as it is not on here, but I'll be using this one right here. So I think this one probably fits about maybe four, five and a half hash browns. I don't know, we'll see once we get them in there. But these are the hash browns that I'll be using. I'll also be using some cut up red and orange bell peppers. Now, you do not have to use these peppers. I choose to use these peppers. Again, with this meal, you can put anything you want as the ingredients. I can add onions or you cannot add onions. I'm choosing to use red and orange peppers. I'm also gonna be using some turkey breast because this is the only meat that I have and I do wanna have a little bit of meat in it. And then I'm also gonna be using my eggs. I'm using six eggs. You can use as many as you want, but it depends on the size of the pan that you are using to cook it in. So I also got some coconut milk and some heavy whipping cream. Now, the reason that I have both is because coconut milk is a little bit thinner than regular milk if you were using like whole milk or 2% milk. So I wanted to add the heavy whipping cream just to thicken it up. This is just to add fluffiness to the mixture. So if you have whole milk, you can definitely just use whole milk. I'm also gonna be using some sharp cheddar cheese and the butter right there is just to coat the pan. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get the hash browns in the pan and then I'm gonna add everything else after that. All right guys, so let me show you everything that I have set up right here. And I'm gonna show you everything step-by-step step on how to make this hash brown casserole possible. All right, let's get into the video. So the first thing that we're gonna do is just grease the pan. Now you can use oil, you can use whatever you want, but I'm just gonna use butter today. And I'm just gonna go around it like this. I'm just spreading the butter through it. And you're doing this just so that when you put your mixture in, it's not sticking to the bottom of it. So once you've got your butter in your pan, you're gonna start adding your hash browns. And you're just gonna layer them like this. So I said, this one is not gonna fit all six of the hash browns I have. So what I'm gonna do is break this in half. Now the thing about these hash browns, these are already frozen. I did not let them sit out for too long before I um, you know, decided to start cooking them. You do not have to use hash brown patties. I'm using hash brown patties because I have them. You can also use just, um, you know, hash browns, packaged hash browns, the hash brown shreds or whatever. So I'm using the hash brown patties, but this is just a preference for me. Use whatever you have. Once you got your hash browns in here, you can go ahead and set those to the side because now the next thing you're gonna do is get your eggs mixture together. Once you got your eggs in, you're gonna go ahead and mix them. Now I'm gonna add my peppers. Mix that up a little bit. 
Next thing I'm gonna add is my turkey that I already cut up. I'm gonna add a little bit of coconut milk, followed by a little bit of whipping cream. I'm not measuring, I'm just pouring, but if you'd like to measure, you definitely can. And now I'm just adding my cheese. And then I'm gonna mix all that up. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is add my seasonings to it. I'm gonna add some cayenne pepper. And then I'm also just gonna add some seasoning salt. And mix all that up again. I'm gonna bring back my hash browns. And then all I'm gonna do is pour this over my hash browns. Now the last thing I'm gonna do is just garnish it with some parsley flakes. If you have scallions or something like that, you can substitute that for putting that on top, but I don't have any scallions, so I'm just gonna top it with parsley. Now you don't have to do this. This is just a preference. You know, makes it look a little bit nicer. So this is what it looks like. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put some aluminum foil on this, put it in the oven for 25 minutes on 375. Then we're gonna take it out of the oven, take the aluminum foil off, and then let it cook for an additional 20 to 25 minutes until it's golden brown on top. All right, so let's get this in the oven, guys. Okay, so this has been cooking for 25 minutes. I'm gonna take the foil off and see what it looks like. So, so far, so far this is what it looks like. And it's not done, as you can see, it's still, still kind of runny in the middle. So now we're gonna stick this back in the oven for an additional 20 to 25 minutes and let it finish cooking. Okay, here we are, the finished product. I put it back in for an additional 30 minutes because I wanted to I wanted it to brown a little bit on top. But here we have it. Hash brown casserole. All right, guys, here is the finished product. Now I have cut it up already. I let it sit for about 10 minutes when I took it out just to let it cool off. Now I'm going to show you guys exactly what it looks like. There you have it. Simple, easy ingredients, about 45 minutes to an hour cook time, depending on how done you want it, depending on what ingredients you have in it besides your eggs and your hash browns. That is it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Bye. Morning YouTube family. Welcome back or welcome to Lin Lin. Thank you guys so much for coming to check out the video today. As you can see, I am in the kitchen and I'm going to be making myself some breakfast this morning. One of the things that I told myself I would start doing is to get up every morning, especially on my days off, and cook myself some breakfast. I haven't been doing it for a while and I kind of got out of the routine of doing it. Um, I started eating much later, like 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I started noticing a big difference. I was losing weight and things like that. So I told myself I'm going to get back into the routine of cooking for myself every morning. So this morning I'm going to be making an omelet. I'm also going to make my protein drink that I've been making for, I want to say about a week now. And I'm going to show you guys everything that I'm going to do. All right, so let's get into the video, guys. So I got my eggs here. 
and I'm going to be using three eggs. Also have some of my peppers that I purchased from um, Grocery Outlet. Um, I want to say it was probably about a week or so ago. These are the only ones that I have left. I have eaten most of them. So I'm gonna cut a couple of these up to go in my omelet as well. I'll also be using some sharp cheddar cheese. And then I have a little bit of mozzarella cheese here as well. And then I'll be using some sliced turkey breast. First thing I'm gonna do is oil my pan with some extra light olive oil. So once I've got my eggs all mixed up, I'm not gonna season them while they're in here. I would like to season mine while they're in the pot. So, got that all greased up, oiled up. Now sometimes I use butter, but I don't know. Usually when I'm cooking an omelet, I just like to use oil. It just works out a little bit better. So once that's all done, I let it heat up for a couple seconds. Doesn't take long to heat up. I had my pot on for a minute, so it should be nice and heated by now. Then I'm just gonna pour it in. Now I'm just gonna let that sit for a little bit. And then while that's sitting, I'm gonna start shredding my cheese and cutting up my peppers, which I probably should have did beforehand but I didn't, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it really quick now. Okay, my peppers are now cut. I'm just gonna check the eggs. And it's still pretty runny, so what I like to do is kind of move it around. Now that my peppers are cut up, I'm gonna cut up my turkey. Okay, so this is what the omelet looks like so far. And it's looking done on that side. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and flip it over. Now I like to flip mine and let it cook on the other side before I start adding anything to it. I notice that sometimes it's kind of not cooked in the middle and I don't like that so I like to flip it just to make sure it's cooked on both sides 
I'm gonna let it cook on this side for a second and then I'm gonna go ahead and flip it back over and then add the ingredients. Before I put everything in, I'm gonna start seasoning it. I'm gonna use some cayenne pepper. And then I'm gonna use some seasoning salt. Now the last thing I'm gonna do is just shred my cheese on top of it. Mozzarella first. Now the cheddar. Now I'm just gonna let this sit for a minute and finish cooking. Okay, so now it is all done. I'm gonna plate it. This is what it looks like. Now I'm gonna make some spinach to throw on top of it. So I'm gonna set this to the side and in the same pot, I'm gonna put some spinach in there and fry that up really quick. I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic. I'm gonna add cayenne. And a little bit of lemon pepper. It's not. I know. Then I'm just gonna add this on top. Um, what? Dicey. Hold on, buddy. Move. This is hot. And. Okay. Here is my omelet. I got turkey and cheese and some peppers in it. Then I threw some spinach on top. Now I'm just gonna add some fruit and that will be my breakfast for today. So 
it's Friday. All right, guys, there is my breakfast for today. That looks delicious. I got an omelet with cheddar cheese and mozzarella, a couple peppers, and some oven roasted turkey with spinach on top and a bowl of fruit. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next video. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. Bye. What's up, YouTube family? Welcome back or welcome to Lin Lin. Thank you guys so much for coming to check out the video today. As you guys know, today is Taco Tuesday and I am in the kitchen whipping up some juicy chicken queso nachos. This meal is super easy and it only takes a couple ingredients. Let me show you guys exactly what you will be needing and exactly how to make this meal possible. All right, guys, let's get into it. The first and the most important thing you will need is your crock pot. This meal is going to be made exclusively in the crock pot. Now you could do it in a pot on the stove if you wanted to. It would probably take less time. For me and for today, I'm going to be using my crock pot. I got my chicken breast here. Now these are thin sliced chicken breast. I want to say there's about six of them in here and I have already seasoned them. To start off, I added taco seasoning and then I added some lemon pepper and then I also added some garlic pepper as well. You can add this to the chicken or you can add this once you put the mixture in the crock pot. But for me, I wanted my chicken to marinate for a little bit. So I just added it to the chicken and let it sit in the refrigerator. And I let it marinate for about two hours before I decided to get it started and put it in my crock pot. The next ingredient you're going to be using is a can of Rotel. Now, if you do not have Rotel, you can substitute that for diced chilies and um, diced tomatoes. But fortunately, I have a can of Rotel. The next thing you're gonna use is some chicken broth. This is also optional. You can use water if you want. I'm gonna use chicken broth because it makes the chicken a lot more juicier, a lot more moist. The last thing you're gonna need is some queso dip. Now this will be my second time making this recipe. The first time I did this recipe, I used the yellow queso dip. Today I'm using the white one just because I wanna see the difference between the two. I wanna try something else this time. So this is the one that I'll be using, but you can also use the yellow one as well. So these are the main ingredients that you guys will need. You can substitute the chicken broth, you can substitute the rotel, but it's easier to just have all these ingredients as one. As you can see, there's only five ingredients that you need to make this dish possible. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is take my chicken and I'm gonna put it in the crock pot. So I'm gonna get all these cans open. The last thing we'll do is add the queso dip because that is gonna go in at the very last. The only thing we'll be adding right now is the chicken, the chicken broth, and the rotel. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get this started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add my chicken. Like I said, I let this marinate in the refrigerator for about two hours. I'm just gonna put these in the crock pot. The next thing I'm gonna do is add the chicken broth. Then after that, I'm gonna add the Rotel. Now that everything is in there, I'm just gonna kinda mix it all around, get it really coated in there. Okay, now once you have all of your ingredients in here, you're just gonna cover this and let it cook for approximately three to four hours before you do anything else with it. Okay guys, so this is gonna sit here for three to four hours. 
When this is all done, I'm gonna come back and show you guys the next step that we're gonna do to make this juicy chicken nachos possible. I took the lid off and it has been cooking for about two hours now. I just kind of wanted to check them and see how they are doing. This is what it looks like so far. So they got a little bit of ways to go. And as you can see, I can kind of get in there and tear it apart a little bit, but it's not quite ready to start shredding yet. So I'm gonna let it cook for another hour before I start trying to shred it. The smell is so good though right now. I cannot wait for this to be done, guys. So let's put the lid back on and let these continue to cook. It is all finished. I actually let it cook for four hours. So now what I'm gonna do is shred all of this up and then I'm gonna take the juice out of it and then I'm gonna add the queso sauce. I told you to have my eye open. She's in everyone hers. So once you're done draining majority of the juice out of there, it's gonna end up looking like this. You can see there's still a little bit of juice in there. You just don't want too much because then it will end up making the sauce kind of runny. So this is what it looks like. Now the last thing that we're gonna do is go ahead and add the queso sauce. And then once that's added, we're gonna let it cook for another 20 minutes. We're gonna cover this back up and let it cook for another 20 minutes. Okay, it has now been cooking for about another 20 minutes after adding the queso sauce. I added some cilantro to one side of it because not everyone in my family likes cilantro. So I left this side plain. Now it's time to plate it all up. Final product for the juicy chicken queso nachos. That looks delicious. Make sure you guys like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye. What's up, YouTube family? Welcome back, or welcome to Lin Lin. Thank you guys so much for coming to check out the video today. Guys, if you've seen my last video, I went and got a bunch of stuff that I needed to get for my husband's birthday. Now, I'm about to show you guys how I put everything together, my fruit, my vegetables and all the other stuff that I got to make this little thing for him complete. Let me show you guys everything that I have set up so far, all right? Okay guys, this is everything that I have that I'm going to be using to make my platters complete. I got my pineapples here and I've got my 
cucumbers and my celery. I got my summer sausage. I got some cheese. I got some pepperoni. I got some cracked black pepper turkey. I got more my tortillas that I'm gonna be using. I've also got some strawberries. I got some Ritz crackers here. And then I also have some broccoli and some cauliflower. I got some red and green grapes over there. Now guys, I have already washed all of my fruit, all of my vegetables, and I did that first because I was like, the video is going to be way too long if I sit here and show you guys me washing and cutting and doing all that. So I went ahead and just did all that before I started the video. What I am going to do is make the pinwheels with the tortillas and the um, turkey and the cheese. I'll show you guys how I do those. And then I'm also going to cut up the sausage and the cheese as well to go on the platter. Now, guys, I'm not sure if I'm going to use. Let me show you. I have these platters right here that I got from Dollar Tree a long time ago. I have these and then I also have these kind of platters right here. Now, I'm still trying to decide how I want to put the things on the platter, which ones that I want to use. So we will figure that out after we do the pinwheels, get those going, get the sausage and everything cut up. All right, guys, let's get into this video. First thing I'm going to do is move all of this stuff out of the way so that I can start making the pinwheels. of these and got all these here so these are the pinwheels right here I'm gonna put these in the refrigerator the next thing I'm gonna do is cut up the sausage all right guys so I finished cutting the sausage as well as the cheese I decided that I'm gonna use these platters just because it's a little bit easier. I can just put everything in its own little section and just keep it moving versus me trying to be fancy and create a charcuterie board type thing when I have no clue what I'm doing. So these are what we're gonna go with today, all right guys? So now I'm just gonna start putting everything in them. All right, guys, this is the fruit tray. I don't know what I'm gonna put yet here in the middle, but I'm gonna go ahead and go on to the next tray and start putting all that stuff in there.
I need your phone out. I'm just letting you know. all right guys these are my platters that i put together i got my vegetable one with the pinwheels the turkey pinwheels the sausage the pepperoni one over here with all your fruit and your cheese now i have to get a separate container to put like the ranch in but guys that's it those are my platters that i put together for my husband's birthday Guys, that is the end of the video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.